John here guys and today we are talking about dyeing nylon 3D printed pods or canopies. Now these are canopies for the Campfire Quads CF1 and if you haven't watched my review on that go check it out now. But I wanted to get some new canopies for the two that I built out. Now first and foremost I wanted a GoPro canopy. Now I ordered these from Phoenix 3D Printing Solutions. And the cool thing about these guys is they sent out an awesome package of goodies. Here's the bag that I came in and I have some sweet Sour Patch Kids in there and also an already blue TPU GoPro mount sleeve. I also got some Smarties, uh, pretty cool. So. I also wanted to get the new Rocket Man pod, which allows you to run an Axie Stubby. Now, GetFPB recently had a super sale on those, which is why I want at least one of these. Um, I also want to see if this angle of the antenna coming out the back, which is gonna be down in a crash instead of um, at the point of impact, will help. My antennas last a little longer. I did break a true RC actually the other day, but that is, I believe, PLA or some other kind of material. So, first thing that we're gonna do is open up this RIT die. Now, you can buy this at any craft store, you can buy it at Walmart. I wanted this specific color, which is aquamarine um, for mine because it's gonna match my blue hyperlight motors that I run. And so the instructions say um, that I've read on online for other people, one cap full per cup of water. So I kind of took a look at how far these sit in this bowl. Now here's another tip. I went out to the Dollar Tree and bought this bowl today because I did not want to use one of the fancier pans in the house because if that dye stains it, um, there's gonna be hell to pay from the lady. So, um, so let's uh, let's add two capsules because I'm gonna plan on putting two cups here, and I'm gonna do this over this, you know, sort of a metal. I don't know if it's a doggy bowl or what. So there's one. Here is two. I'm being quite careful um, to get all the little drips out before I put the cap back on. And I'm gonna go ahead and place it right there. Now let's go ahead and move this outside before we get started. careful not to drop this and I'm gonna actually possibly okay so I tried to get this ready beforehand but it did not work um, so the other thing I would suggest do not doing is not doing it on your back patio at least not on the cement portion of that but I'm gonna suggest put down some kind of cardboard sure that you don't get the dye on your dog. I'm not really sure what that would be. Now you'll notice that I have my waffle maker right next to the stove. And that's because I hosted a brunch yesterday and I'm very serious about my waffles. Um, there's actually the last one right there that I'm gonna have at lunch today. So I'm gonna put this on high heat on this pan and I've measured out two cups of water that are gonna coincide with that two capfuls. And I'm just gonna let that boil. Yeah, so while we're waiting for the water to boil, 
Let's check out this Warring Pro Waffle Maker. This is all stainless steel. And I have a significant amount of gift cards um, from our wedding registry that I wanted to use um, for something at Bed Bath & Beyond. I really didn't know what because I'm not really much of a Bed Bath & Beyond shopper. So instead of buying just some random towels or some stuff, I decided to go all in on a serious waffle maker because even the house we have is quite serious about my waffles. Now, this is a day old waffle. I didn't cook this because this was made for a uh, Father's Day lunch. Um, but you can see, look at the golden brown highlights on this. Um, I know I didn't get any of the dye on the waffle. Um, now, I, it was complete this morning, but I did eat a quarter of it for breakfast. Now, my neighbor tends to do a lot of projects such as making bunk beds for his two kids, but I've never been over to his house for brunch. And I don't think he makes waffles like these. So, not saying, just saying, guys. Okay, that water looks like it is come to a good boil. So, I'm gonna go ahead and Turn it off, remove from the heat, and we are gonna walk outside with this. As soon as I find the towel to your condo. So this is quite hot, so be careful as you're doing this. And I'm going to pour in two cups of boiling water slowly. You can see it's mixing nicely with the dye. Put this to the side here. And what I'm gonna use to dip the canopies is these little tweezers that I just use for all of my soldering and whatnot. So I'm just gonna pick it up there and dunk it in. I'll go ahead and dunk the other one in there too. Now from what I have read from people, you wanna leave these in for about a minute or so. I'm just gonna kind of toss them around in there. I'm not sure if this is right, but we'll see how these turn out. So I'm gonna let it soak, and I'm gonna turn them about every 10 to 15 seconds. And then um, from what I understand is, depending on how light or dark you want these, um, that's how long that you wanna set them in for. So here is the motor color that I'm trying to match right there. So let's just get a little closer in on this. Yeah, this little gimbal zoom feature is pretty nice. So I can see it's not super dark yet, so I'm just gonna keep letting it soak a little bit longer. Now I'm not sure if these will get darker um, after they soak or if you're supposed to just keep letting them soak. So let's experiment with that. I was a shock, good soak. Um, I'm very good soak. The soak of the year. <laughs> and I guess um, probably the better practice would have been to do one at a time, but oh well, I'm impatient. So let's just do both at a time. And if I don't like these, I still have like two other pots I can count them. Let's see if we can center this a little bit. See, now I think that I really need to kind of think of this as like flipping burgers. And so I just kind of need to let them sit on each side a little bit and quit constantly messing with them. So let's try to do that. I, I just, I thought they'd be getting a little bit darker. Um, so I'm gonna let them soak a little bit longer. Now I have one that I believe was dyed with the same color. Um, already that was done by I guess Scott, I'm not sure who, but I'm trying to kind of match that and that seems to be a little darker than this. Although I, I do see that the color's soaking in. Um, I can kind of tell that the top of that GoPro mount is, seems a little bit lighter still, so I'm going to shake it, make sure it gets in there real good. It's looking pretty good. Um, I do like 
the blue that this is starting to turn. So I think I'll leave it in for a little bit longer. Now I also understand that as you crash these, um, they get a little scuffed up, they get a little dirt um, kind of put, kind of stuffed in there for whenever you crash and you're doing turtle mode and that sends all the finely cut grass directly into your pot. Now I have found a good way to get those clean again is by just using an old toothbrush and just kind of getting it just a little bit wet and scrubbing it. Um, now by using an old toothbrush rather than a new toothbrush, um, what ends up happening is that after you're done cleaning your pot, one, it looks almost new, and two, you also get a nice minty freshness um, because it's a toothbrush type of seed. So I always keep old toothbrushes in the garage just for kind of scrubbing down stuff. Um, so I always have a nice minty fresh uh, smelling pot, which is, which is a nice touch. So I don't know, this is looking really nice. Look how close this blue is to, let me see if I can get this motor in the shot here. Look how close that is to that. Ooh, very nice indeed. Okay guys, and here are the results. I must say I am quite pleased with how these turned out. Um, this was pretty much exactly the color I was going for. So if you do use any of the Hyperlite motors that are the blue and orange colors, I think that Aquamarine is going to be your best bet now. Chris and Brian have been saying that for a while, so it's not any news there. Um, and of course, this is an undyed pod, so this is what you originally get. I also really love um, this new Rocket Man design. Here you have the uh, Axie Stubby coming out the back there. I'm not sure if I've mounted this right, so let me know if that looks off to you. And this is all from Phoenix 3D Solutions, as I mentioned. This is a TPU GoPro holder, and I love that I can just, you know, take this on and off very quickly. I've had the GoPro Session 4, and this is the GoPro Session 5 for a while but i just rarely ever fly them not nearly as much as i thought i would and that's because on the flosses you kind of have to take the pod on and off and i had to affix it with zip ties and it just was kind of a mess this is nice that i can just leave this pod on there all the time if i'm not using the gopro i can just unstrap it and it's just one strap away from being able to fly so i really do like that the color is great here is my other CF1 that, I, again, I picked up used. And you can see that I think this one was not dyed quite as long because the blue is not as dark. And I recently did do the cleaning with this one with a toothbrush. So I have the option of just re-dyeing this if I want it to match these. And I understand that it should re-dye no problem. And then since it was so easy um, that I may just do that. So I ordered another one of these guys, so I think I'm going to end up with three. Am I actually going to fly three or just keep one as a spare? I'm not sure, but I will tell you, as of right now, I have two built CF1s, and I'm down to only one built floss. So is the transition going to happen? It, it just might. So if you want to dye your canopies, hopefully that is helpful. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next time. Ready? Are you done? Yeah.
Okay, here's what happens when you go into the fence. Here's the other side of the video. I don't know if you can see me out here. Uh, it is on there good.